this week, a serial stabber in Queens caught. I feel safer and I hope he might get the help that he needed. Plus, two NYPD officers shot on duty. This was a horrific incident. And a look at the flow of illegal weed in the city. Opens up, is magnetized, comes into another room. And I got more product in here. Right now, Fox 5's Crime in the City. Here are some of the crimes across the five boroughs. We begin this week in Queens, where an all-out manhunt for a serial stabber comes to an end. Well, the man accused of going on a stabbing spree across parts of Queens is now facing attempted murder charges. Yeah, that suspect arrested after a citywide manhunt. Ashley Rodriguez is live in Rochdale, Queens, with more on this investigation. Ashley, what's the very latest? Yeah, police combed the city for 22 hours yesterday. Finally, they found their suspect. They actually used surveillance video from a home in this neighborhood to lead them to his house, which is right behind me. And you can see that's a nice house. He had a job at a hospital. He has no criminal history, no mental health history. Well, that all changed today. Jermaine! Why would you stab those people? Police arrested 27-year-old Jermaine Regeer at his home at 13319 160th Street, 22 hours after calling a citywide manhunt for the man they say used a hunting knife to randomly stab five innocent New Yorkers over nine days. It didn't appear as though he was looking to stop anytime soon. And thank God we have no one that lost uh, his or her life because of this incident, but it did send uh, real fears uh, throughout our entire city. Mayor Eric Adams says it was good old fashioned police work that led to his arrest. NYPD used all hands on deck, assigning around 75 detectives to the case, interviewing residents and business owners, flooding the transit system and posting flyers. I was feeling so scared. Residents in South Queens say they feel relief knowing he's in custody. I'm happy that the police do their job. I feel safer and I hope he might get the help that he needed. Police say Regeer made it easier for them. Surveillance video shows him wearing a lanyard connected to his job as a greeter at Woodhall Hospital, a job that requires a background check. But the alleged serial stabber had no criminal history. He will never return to Woodhall again. Police still have no motive for the stabbing spree that began January 8th. They say when he stabbed a 61 year old man in the back, he was laughing. And when he ran up on a 34 year old woman as she got off the bus, stabbing her in the back, she says he appeared to be talking to himself, speaking gibberish. Then Wednesday morning, he stabbed three men within minutes of each other. Job well done by the police department, the detectives, and job well done by New Yorkers. Now the suspect faces multiple charges, including attempted murder, attempted assault, and criminal possession of a weapon. The residents here are very thankful to the NYPD tonight. Then in Brooklyn, a man is fatally shot on the subway, and his killer is still at large. The NYPD is looking for a gunman who fatally shot a 45-year-old man on the subway in Brooklyn. Fox 5's Briella Tomasetti has the latest from the scene in Crown Heights. And Briella, it sounds like they're still looking for this individual. Is that right? Yeah, that is correct. Rosanna and Dan, good morning to both of you. And this is still very early on in the investigation, I should mention. Police are currently investigating whether this was a dispute turned violent, a robbery attempt, or something else. They are trying to track down the gunman responsible, of course, for pulling the trigger. <laughs> Police are investigating a subway shooting in Crown Heights that left a 45-year-old man dead. Officers responded to a 911 call for a man shot on board a three train at around 8.15 last night as it pulled into the Franklin Avenue subway station. When police arrived on scene, they found Richard Henderson shot multiple times in the back and shoulder. Citizen app video shows crime scene tape and a heavy NYPD presence underground. During the aftermath, medics rushed Henderson to Kings County Hospital where he died from his injuries. The gunman took off. Ago, I saw somebody In late November, a 17-year-old boy and 52-year-old man were injured when a shooter opened fire on a rush hour C train in nearby Bedford-Stuyvesant. Police say that shooting was triggered by an argument between the 17-year-old victim and the gunman on the moving train as it approached the Ralph Avenue station. 
20-year-old Alexander Villafana was arrested and charged with attempted murder and assault following the shooting. The victims who were shot in the hand and ankle were both expected to make full recoveries. According to the NYPD's year-end crime statistics, transit crime decreased by 8.2 percent this December compared to last, and by 2.6 percent for the full year. But do New Yorkers actually feel safe riding the subway? It all depends on who you ask. I don't know what to think about it because we ain't safe. That means we ain't safe down here too. Staying in Brooklyn, a domestic violence call ends with gunfire and two veteran cops hurt. Police say after the officers arrived on scene, the suspect grabbed one of their guns and started shooting the officers being treated tonight at Kings County Hospital in East Flatbush. That's where Kendall Green joins us now live with the latest tonight. Kendall. Officials say they're grateful this shooting wasn't much worse since the suspect in custody it was, has six prior arrests involving two domestic violence incidents and one attempted murder conviction back in 2004. A massive police presence along Bergen Street in Brownsville, Brooklyn after two veteran NYPD officers were shot just after three Tuesday afternoon. A shooting Mayor Eric Adams could only characterize as horrific. This was a horrific incident uh, that, uh, because of their actions, a dangerous person is apprehended, and we have two officers that will be going home to their families. Ms. Fuller, a neighbor, saw and heard the commotion that sent her and her kids into an instant panic. The guy comes and he sh shuts off two rounds and then he lets off four rounds. And it's just like blood everywhere and I have little kids and I can barely make it inside my building with the kids. So I'm wondering what is going on here. The officers were responding to a 911 call from a mother with a head injury, telling police she was being physically assaulted by her son, 39-year-old Melvin Butler. Before that shooting, Ms. Fuller recalls hearing an aggressive exchange of words. I didn't hear too much with the argument. Just I heard one thing, and he said, remember what you said to me yesterday? I don't know too much after that. It's just what you remember what you said. I'm not going to jail. Yes, he's not going back. Police say when officers attempted to arrest Butler, he grabbed one of the officers' gun, shooting one in his left hand, the other in the left thigh. The violent encounter caught on officers' body cams. From what I viewed, it's immediately as they're struggling, they're going to the ground, and then you hear an officer state, he has my gun, and then shots are fired. We had a very violent and dangerous person that has a long record of violence, attempted to harm our police officers, but they responded accordingly. Butler's history with police includes six prior arrests, most recently back in February last year for domestic violence, followed by another in January. Authorities report Butler's more serious crime 20 years ago for attempted murder, where he spent 15 years in state custody. We're going to follow this case and make sure that this individual who shot two New York City police officers stays behind bars. Both officers are being treated at Kings County Hospital recovering from their wounds, while Butler himself was shot multiple times, listed in critical but stable condition at Brookdale Hospital. Over in Manhattan, Newsstands in the borough are being targeted by a gang of violent robbers. Newsstands becoming the latest targets of robbers here in the city. Four men now wanted in connection with at least nine different incidents that happened over a span in less than two weeks. Fox Eyes Lisa Evers talked to a worker about the measures that he's taking to stay safe. The owner of this newsstand at 54th Street and Broadway shouted no as a Manhattan robbery crew pulled him out of his stand. The NYPD says it's one of nine violent newsstand and concession stand robberies in the last two weeks by the same four-man crew. Cash is still king at the newsstands. In this case, that meant thousands of dollars. That day it was uh, more than 10,000 because we carry lottery here. So heavy cash we always carry here. Police released these photos of the four suspects they believe are responsible for the nine robberies, two downtown, five on Broadway, and two on the east side. Safety worries have forced some to shorten their business hours. I'm a little bit right now scared because that thing happened here. That's why I'm a little bit scared. Before we close 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, but right now we close 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock, we finish. 
the suspects wait outside the door of the newsstand like this so that when the owner comes out, that's when they ambush him. For decades, newsstands have been a beloved staple of New York culture. But as newspaper sales declined, their number dwindled from an estimated 1,300 in 1950 to just over 300 in 2022. This worker says the police are giving them extra support at closing time. The police, so they give some protection right now. Every night they stand here. Police say in one case the suspect pulled a knife, but in most cases they used brute force. The victims ranged in age from 23 to 70 and included two women. Police are asking anyone with information to call 1-800-577-TIPS. You don't have to give your name. And finally, an exclusive look at the city's illegal weed trade and a big bust in Brooklyn. Well, it's a problem with hardly any solution. Unlicensed weed shops popping up all over the city. But if these stores aren't licensed to do business, it begs the question, where are they getting their supply from? All right, Fox 5's Arthur Chan tagged along with the NYC Sheriff's Office on another bust and is getting some answers. It may be a new year, but an old problem has the attention of the New York City Sheriff's Department and other law enforcement agencies on this day as its war on illegal weed sales in New York City continues. This is all flour. Fox 5 was there exclusively as police took down Jackie's garden, not quite hidden, on the corner where the Jackie Robinson Parkway ends and converges with Bushwick, Jamaica, and Pennsylvania Avenues. Officers blitzed the Cypress Hills location with Sheriff Anthony Miranda overseeing the operation himself. Jackie's garden was ready for visitors with trap compartments and hiding spots like this bookshelf. So it's like a bookshelf? It's a bookshelf, you wouldn't know. Opens up, it's magnetized, comes into another room. Behind the bookshelf, a stash house. And they got more product in here. You can come in. Inside, pretty much a catalog of illegal weed, from the flower itself to products that shamelessly target underage consumers and even kids. Backpack boys. Not just through their packaging, but also the product itself. These, for instance, are miniature ice cream cones. If a child ever found this, they wouldn't think twice about eating it. One of these can get someone significantly high. What it would do to a child would just could cripple them. And that's if the child only eats one of them. Sheriff Miranda then showed us a night window where sales are made presumably during off hours when another stash house was found. You found more back there? In yet another room, in everyday laundry bags, bags and bags of weed, unlabeled. The sheriff explains what customers are actually buying when they're purchasing unregulated weed. People are not smoking a different quality of weed. What they're smoking, the chemicals that are put onto these things to make them more potent. That's what makes it more dangerous. And in addition to the drugs on the table, cash. By an early count, upwards of $100,000 would be seized at this location. A combination of weed, weed products, and cash. On the spot, three individuals were arrested. As the city continues its crackdown, we ask the question, where is all this illegal weed coming from? And on this raid, we started getting some answers. There are multiple sources of the unlicensed and illegal stuff that's coming into New York City. As we take a closer look, much of the products omit their origins, but Sheriff Miranda knows where to look. This doesn't even say where it's from, right? Right, so we just, you flip it on the QR code side and you can track it here. It should be able to give you information about where its origins are from. Just about all of the products that we saw have QR codes, but many of the products Fox 5 scanned went to dead end sites. A sign, Miranda says, that the illegal shops want to make their products look official when they really are not. We see labels, some of them may, may be legitimate. We also found uh, false labels, so they're manufacturing their own labels now. And here's evidence supporting his theory. Bags of weed and ready-to-go packaging on site with labels, which can be assembled at the store, out of sight. Digging further, we ask who is supplying all this illegal weed into New York City. The majority of the illegal weed coming into New York State is actually legally manufactured in other states. Damian Fagan is with the state's Office of Cannabis Management, which says more than $57 million of illegal cannabis was seized in New York last year, mostly coming from states that legalized, but have seen their growing outpace heavily consumer demand. California, Michigan, now Maine, there are a lot of growers uh, that just like our state may not have, you know, enough uh, available access to legal stores in their own state. From there, Fagan says it's economics that drives all of that product 
to us. The price for, for a pound of legal cannabis has dropped from $1,500 to $200. When they only can sell, sell their pound for $200 at a legal shop in Michigan, but $2,000 in New York State, this, that's the supply and demand that is, uh, you know, really bringing a lot of that product to, to, to New York. Whether it's California, Maine, or Michigan, clearly illegal weed is coming into the New York City market. And the key question now is how to stop that flow at a time when it seems there are stores in just about every neighborhood in New York City. For the Office of Cannabis Management, the solution is in recent changes to the law that include how landlords are now held accountable for renting to tenants selling illegal weed. The first operation to be padlocked under the new law was in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn in December. We are going to shut the property down. We are going to levy you know, up to $10,000 a day uh, against these landlords um, for, for continuing to, to push illicit products into our communities. And for the sheriff's department, its ask is for legislators to allow them to use the same law on their raids, a joint effort to root out and dry up commercial retail operations for illegal sellers. And that's this week's Crime in the City. Subscribe for more at youtube.com slash fox5ny.